This module is about Istio and it's about Kubernetes. More specifically, it's about rate limiting services in Kubernetes clusters using Istio. When implementing services in Kubernetes, a developer needs to consider the physical limitations of the system, such things as bandwidth, the number of concurrent connections that can be routed, and how much data can be transferred among the various services are key questions to address. Rate limiting attempts to adjust this problem, allowing developers to make sure that common services are available, such as the ones that allow logins. Denial of service attacks have increased in recent years, so it's important to really think about protecting your users from such nefarious activities. So what we hope to show here in this session is how you can control and rate limit services. So make sure before watching this video, you've watched the four ones that preceded this one. Number one is getting started, how to set up Istio, how to set up the book info application. Second video is a gentle introduction to routing rules and getting traffic to specific pods depending on the route rules that you define. The third video is taking a look at HTTP headers, also known as kind of layer seven routing, where you're looking at the actual payload or the headers to make routing decisions. And in the fourth video, we're taking a look at fault injection. How do you verify performance in your microservices? So take a look at these before jumping into this one and make some assumptions about your environment and being set up. Okay, so let's get started here by first cleaning up. So Istio CTL Git Route Rules will list out those route rules already in place. These are the ones that we wish to delete. So I've written a little Python app that goes ahead and writes out the command I'm going to use to do the delete. So I'm going to go ahead here and run Python 3 rate limits route rules dot pi and it'll list out the commands for me to automatically delete these. I've talked about this in the past. So let's go ahead now and delete what looks like seven rules or six rules that need to be deleted before moving any further. We'll need a clean environment before setting new rules, but let's just run this cleanup now. There are three basic YAML files that define both the rules, the routing rules, as well as the rate limit rules. And you can see this here. So the first two really define the overall rule set to route between the product page and the reviews, the ratings, details, etc. But really, when you think about the rate limiting, that's taking place here in the green box. So let's take a closer look at the mixer rule ratings rate limit YAML file. And you'll see three main sections, three main kinds. The first one is mem quota, the second one is quota, and the third is rule. This content is not very well documented. The sample application works well here, so I'll just do my best to explain how these elements interrelate to each other. Let's begin with mem quota. The first thing and most important thing to notice is quotas. Quotas have a name, and what's interesting is they have a max amount for a duration of one second. What that means and this is the default value, is that all traffic can maximize 500 queries per second. Again, this is the default value and can be overridden, as you'll see later below, in the two dimension sections. The first dimension section says that if we have a source called reviews calling into a destination called ratings, that traffic will be limited to one query per second. You see that in the max amount and the valid duration. It appears that entry overrides the more general one right below it, the second dimension, where the destination is simply ratings without any particular note of the source. This rate is a little more generous at 100 queries per second. And that takes us over here to the right hand column where the kind is quota. You'll notice that the metadata name is request count, which does bind to the quota section for the kind mem quota. The part that's not well documented here is the dimension sections where you see source, source version, destination, destination version. What I am surmising here is that the source.labels app maps to the pod for reviews you see here in the lower bottom. Likewise for the version. I'm also surmising that this is the mechanism by which we define more clearly the two dimensions here on the left for destination equal to ratings. So the third kind of rule here essentially is defining the handler and the handler in this case is handler.memquota. This indicates that the adapter is the memquota adapter and it uses a sliding window of a sub-second resolution to enforce the rate limits. 
I recommend if you're adapting for your own scenario, you pay careful attention to the labels here and some of the naming conventions being used. So let's go about the business of cleaning up all of our route rules. In case you've been experimenting, let's just delete everything. This time around, we're going to use the YAML files to do the deletion. I couldn't figure out how to delete quotas and such. So just using the YAML files for route rules, reviews, test V2, route rules, reviews V3. And then finally, the last one here is the uh, rate limiting version. So let's go ahead now and recreate all these rules. There's going to be nothing new here because it's the same three files we saw earlier. These set up the routes. They also set up the rate limiting rules. We took a close look at all that earlier, so we're just going to now set it up and then really test everything. And the idea here is that we want to make sure that the rate limiting actually works. And that's what we're going to do next here after the creation of all the elements here. Okay, so the next step here is to make the server really busy and really tax the services here. So we're going to do a little curl command here over and over and over against the product page. This is going to go ahead and exceed the quotas that we set up. And therefore, when we go to the web page, you'll see that, in fact, we won't get the ratings because, after all, we've been rate limited. So let's do that now. Let's go to HTTP, the IP address, and slash product page. And notice we got the stars. Also notice that uh, as we refresh, the stars disappear. That's because we've been rate limiting the rates service, pun intended there. And look over here. We do have JSON. That was essential because that's what got us routed through the rate limited service. You have to be logged in as JSON in the HTTP header. Okay, let's go into Chrome Developer Tooling and actually poke around a little bit here. Notice we've got all the ratings working. Uh, and then we'll just refresh a couple times. It will trigger the rate throttling. We go to Network tab here in Developer Tooling. can drill down into Product Page. Notice we got it on the Headers tab, but we can go to Preview here, go back to Headers, go down towards the bottom. You can start seeing the cookie information here. User equals JSON, good to know. We see the host, IP address, and of course the URL for the request. And so at this point, I wanted to show you here the status code, HTTP is 200. I expected a 429. Maybe it's somewhere else in the call chain, I don't see it but certainly I'm being throttled because I don't see the stars. So as we wrap up uh, the demo here, the point of course is that we are getting rate throttled. So that the final conclusion here is that we need to prevent our API from getting overwhelmed from too many requests. I would have liked to have seen that 429 too many request message as an HTTP response. I will go ahead now and maybe play around with TCP dump, see if I could come up with an answer. But that's gonna wrap this up for now. I'll leave you with a little note about other capabilities in rate limiting, and again, refer you back to the Istio website for updates there. Let's go back to the Istio website as a wrap up here. Go read some of the documentation here. Remember one thing, the files that I used aren't exactly the same. The, the discussion here on the Istio website doesn't really align perfectly with the sample, but for the most part, it captures it. So you can go read here about some of the things going on and the experiment we just ran where we wanted to rate limit the rating service specifically for the HTTP header that contains the string user equals JSON. Remember, there are other features of this syntax that you could take advantage of for the rules. For example, you can maybe apply rate limits based on some kind of arbitrary attributes. For example, you might want to apply quota when the requests whose source and destination namespaces are different the rule applies. So in other words, you can just use namespaces as an indicator as to whether you want rate limits on or off.